If I could go back in time, I would be able to get a coding job a lot faster due to changing quite a few mistakes. That is because I was doing so many things incorrectly, like watching a course tutorial and trying to memorize as much as possible. It took me about six months from the process of learning how to code to getting my first job without using any type of live bootcamp. I tried so many different things from free YouTube videos to expensive courses, and none of these got me over that hump to being employable. I'm gonna show you how you can learn from my mistakes my number one tip on creating projects fast and the specific turning point where you can transform from being a beginner to being able to learn really anything coding related. The very first step is to decide on a flexible programming language that allows you to go in so many different career directions. This gives you more opportunities to find an entry level job that'll get you through the door. So for this reason, I highly suggest learning Python or JavaScript. Python is quickly becoming the most popular programming language, which is a great choice for back end web programming data science and machine learning. And with all the hype around AI and chat GBT, Python is becoming a hot skill to have. JavaScript, on the other hand, is more flexible when it comes to web development. Originally, JavaScript was only used on the front end side of programming, but lately JavaScript has became a top choice for backend programming as well. You cannot go wrong with either Python or JavaScript when choosing your starting programming language. Whatever you do though, do not do what I did. When I was learning how to code, I started with Java, and then I try to get into C Sharp and then C++ and then PHP. And then I wanted to learn about Python and Django. And I just kept going down this rabbit hole of programming languages. And I absolutely do not recommend that approach. Sticking with one programming language will get you significantly closer to getting a job than trying a bunch of different ones. This is the intro step where you can pick whatever programming language feels most natural to you. I would recommend Free Code Camp, which allows you to follow along and type some code. This is critical because you are choosing choosing a programming language on what you think feels best, the syntax that is most natural for you. The first thing you should not do is go ahead and get a huge tutorial that's like 10 hours long. You are at the stage of your career where hands-on practice is by far the most valuable thing you can do. Play around with JavaScript and Python until you pick which one that feels the best. After you pick, really try and stick with it, even if you start disliking it after a few weeks. This is the key to getting your first job, sticking with a single language. You will get confused. It will be hard, but eventually you will be able to overcome the confusion. Now that you've chosen a language, we now have to identify the best way to learn how to code. This is the first step in the direction to becoming a developer. And this is where a lot of people start giving up is simply learning how to code. This is a step in which we will do a few things. What we need to do first is select your coding style of learning. Some options will be books or finding a good YouTube series or a Udemy video. Each of these three options have pros and cons. One reason I like books is because there's so much information. Books typically provide a lot of context that can help someone learn. One reason I like YouTube is because it's free for the user. And one reason I like Udemy is that the courses are longer and most good courses have instructors that are able to respond to questions. However, the con to Udemy is that there is a small price, but I highly suggest Udemy. If you're wanting to learn Python, I recommend taking a look at Mosh on YouTube or Angela's 100 Days of of code for Python on Udemy. The number one tip that needs to happen to be able to actually learn code is to type and follow along. There's a very good chance you will not understand everything your first time, and that is okay. You will most likely feel some kind of doubt, but when this happens, take a break, go on a walk, take a nap, do whatever makes your mind more at ease. Learning to code is a big mind shift, and it's pretty hard for people that have no coding experience at all. Believe in yourself and you'll be able to do it. Also remember, there is no rush to learn quickly. Trying to rush will either make you frustrated or potentially make you quit. And actually rushing is another reason people begin to give up on programming. Remember, coding is a marathon, not a sprint. We're not trying to rush there. We are trying to get better each and every day until you're ready to start applying for jobs. Now that you've chosen your programming language, made it through some intro to Python or JavaScript courses, it is now time to build some projects. Just a quick caution, this is not the time to create an Amazon or YouTube clone or even your own personal project. We are starting with simple projects that are a little bit more complex and outside the scope of terminal applications you probably built within your intro courses. This is the time we build web applications like an online to-do application or a note-taking app. This is to solidify your original learning from either the YouTube or Udemy courses. To do this, I would say pick up a framework that allows you to do some of these things a little easier. Frameworks allow you to code and do certain things faster so you don't have to recreate the wheel each time you code. This will help guide you into learning how to do 
some more advanced stuff. I absolutely love the quote, you don't know what you don't know. So take this as an opportunity to expand your mind even more. When it comes to frameworks, if you're using JavaScript, I would recommend using Node.js or React. If you're using Python, I would recommend the framework of Fast API. I would now recommend finding another course or tutorial on the specific framework you chose. This will help you create projects even faster to have access to reusable code. Now, Fast API is my bread and butter, which is a top framework for Python. If you're curious how to build web applications in Python that the whole world can use, I have created a best-selling course on this topic, and I will leave it in the description below so you can check out if you're interested. But anyways, getting familiar with a programming language plus a framework will allow you to be able to create projects that feel more like real-world applications. I recommend adding every single project you do to your portfolio or your GitHub account. When you're brand new trying to get a job, you have to try and be unique somehow. Quality of projects is important and you need to stand out from the crowd and this can really help with your journey. All right, now that we've created a few products with the help of tutorials and courses, it is now time for you to do this alone and try and create a unique application. However, doing this will be easier than you expected. Why? Because you have so many projects that you've already created from your intro course and your framework course. Well, Eric, how does this help? Because you can reuse a lot of the code that's provided. Reusing code is essential in software development. So do not think you need to know how to do everything from your head with absolutely no help. You now have multiple projects. Use the code and create things that are slightly different from the application you created originally. From there, you can add more custom code or create a completely different application. But do not throw away all the code already wrote because a lot of it can be reused. When I was learning how to code, I would save multiple different templates on my computer and based on what I wanted to create for the day, I would choose a template or a theme I wanted to use. This is the absolute fastest way to go to create new projects and my number one tip to getting them off the ground quickly is simply reuse code. Now that we've created some unique applications, I think the next step is one of the most important and that is deploy your application. Deploying means making the app accessible from the internet. For example, if someone types in www.yourproject.com, this would bring them to your application. You can do a Google search on how to deploy a fast API application or react JavaScript application for free or for fairly cheap. There are a ton of different options. Some of the most popular are gonna be AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. But there are a ton of smaller and easier deployment applications to use as well. This is super important later on when we start applying for jobs because you want to be able to show the company really four things once you start applying. That A, you know the specifics of the programming language that you're applying for, so like example, Python. B, you know a framework to go with that programming language, which could be fast API. Three, you know how to deploy that application and make it live. And then four, because I've done those three things, I am now searching for a job so I can help that company do that as well. You are showing the company that you've already put the work in and now you're ready to help their company grow. Now, when applying for a new job, apply for jobs that are around the zero to two years experience. Even if it just says two years flat, apply for it. Sometimes the years of experience is just a term that is thrown in there because they want someone who has put in the work and you have done that, you've put in the work. Now, after applying, how do you get a company to call you for an interview? This is all based on your resume. Do not skip on making the resume literally the best you can. You will want to make sure you provide a bunch of context. Do not be scared to share everything you have learned, like literally everything. Sharing can help with two more aspects. One, displaying your journey, which would be the projects you have made, and two, being personable. Soft skills are often overlooked. It can really separate yourself from others when applying for the same role. I recommend checking out some type of free resume resource on the internet. This can help you a ton and help only make sure you're focusing on your content instead of like how to structure a resume that's readable by systems and by people. Now for the final step, apply directly on the company's website. Applying from a third party like Indeed, LinkedIn, or Monster can make your resume be overlooked. Oftentimes applying through these third party options come second compared to applying to the company on their website. After applying, do not be scared to message the recruiter on LinkedIn just to let them know that you've applied. This is another option to kind of stand out and be unique. After all of this, make sure you're being authentic throughout the whole process. Many hiring managers know when you're being unauthentic or fake throughout the process. So at the end of all of this, remember two more things. This is like five points that turned into like nine is be yourself, be authentic, and good luck on your software journey.